Hey guys, Matt from Haltech here, and today we're going to do something that's actually quite simple, but we get a lot of questions about, and that is how to use a timing light and how to set the base timing on your Haltech ECU. To demonstrate how to set the base timing using a timing light, we're going to be using our tried and true 2JZ engine here but the process is identical no matter what engine you have. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find out exactly where your timing mark is on the crank pulley. Now most of the time you'll be able to find this from a service manual or online. If you don't know, you can always go back to first principles, pull a plug out of cylinder number one and turn the crank by hand and actually measure when cylinder one gets the top dead center. That'll give you the TDC mark or the zero degree mark and that's what we're going to work with today. With that TDC mark confirmed, I'm gonna hook up the timing light to the battery. Really simple, power, ground, and then of course the clamp that goes over to cylinder number one. Now you might notice I've got a little cable tie over the button of my uh, timing light here. That's simply so I don't have to press the button. It's just always on. Because if I've got it connected, I want it to work, right? So really simple mod there. So I'm gonna shine this thing down at the crank pulley. And when I crank it over, what I should see, what I need to see is the timing mark that I just marked up there the mark that's on the actual engine housing and the mark that's on the crankshaft pulley, they need to line up. If they don't, that's where I go into my Haltech software and I make an adjustment to the TDC offset angle until those two marks actually line up. So in the Haltech software, we're gonna to go to setup, main setup. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the ignition tab and I'm gonna turn this lock mode here to always on. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna have the ECU always fire at this number here, zero degrees. So whatever the ECU thinks is top dead center is where it's gonna actually fire the timing. That's why we're gonna check with the timing light whether it's actually doing that. We wanna make sure that what the ECU does is the same as what the engine does. So we're gonna set that to zero because I know that's where my mark is on the crank pulley. Now if when I'm actually got my timing light on there, that top dead center mark doesn't line up, what I do is I go over into my trigger setup page here and I've got this TDC offset angle. And this is the one that I'm gonna to need to adjust to ensure that my timing on the crank lines up with what the ECU thinks is zero. In this case, I was about five degrees out. So I need to change this, to change from 515 to 518. And you can see the timing on the crankshaft moved a couple of degrees, so it's actually not quite there. 520. Now you can see that the timing on the crankshaft is right at top dead center. That is setting the base timing. So I've made those adjustments in the software now, so the actual timing mark on the crankshaft pulley lines up with the mark on the engine block. That's what we call setting the base timing. And that's required for every aftermarket ECU. It synchronizes what the ECU thinks the engine is doing with the, what the engine's actually doing. So it synchronizes the actual crank position between engine and ECU, and it's a requirement. That way, when the ECU says, I want 30 degrees, you'll actually get 30 degrees at the crank. If this was out by say five degrees and the ECU said it was zero, but you were seeing five on the crank, then every time you commanded say 30 degrees, you'd actually get 35 at the crank. So it's really important that these two things line up. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go into the software and actually turn the lock timing off so the ECU is not always locking the timing at top dead center. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna turn off the lock timing so that now the ECU will fire the timing as per the ignition maps. Now, you might ask the question, oh, that's great, except for the fact I don't have spark plug wires like you have here. Um, maybe you've got a coil on plug set up where the coil itself actually pushes down onto the spark plug. What do I do then? You've got a few options. What I like to do, because, you know, I like to take the easier out, is I get an old spark plug wire, and I just cut the end off, or in this case, I can see that the spring here is actually close enough that I can just jam a spark plug wire down the coil there and I can and I can in this case plug it down straight onto the spark plug. Now I've got a spark plug wire. Put my timing light onto that one. 
simple. Now, there are specialized tools for this. So you see this guy here, um, it is actually specially designed for exactly this purpose. So it goes up into here, jams all the way in, and then that guy goes down to the spark plug. And then we can put our timing light onto this just the same. So you've got a few options. If you don't have you know, the specialized spark plug timing tool, it's a pretty cool tool, then really any old lead will do. And in some regards, the older the better. And my least favorite method, if you don't have any way of getting a spark plug lead up into the, uh, the coil here and down onto the plug, is to simply take the clamp itself and hold it open on top of the coil. It's not the best option, but it can give you a lot of the time um, enough information from the timing light to actually get a flash. And so that can work as well. But like I said, that's probably my least favorite method. Best thing to do, get an old spark plug wire, stuff it up there. I hope that clears up any questions or misunderstandings that you had about using a timing light or setting the base timing on a Howtech ECU. If you've got any questions, why don't you drop us an email, give us a call, or hit us up on one of our social media platforms. I'm Matt from Howtech, and I'll see you next time.